Hi, thanks for joining me for this series of fun and interesting hillshade hacks for ArcGIS Pro. Here is a digital elevation model from NASA SRTM data that is covering the Prescott, Arizona area. I didn't realize it was called Prescott, but it is. I always call it Prescott. So I'm creating a series of increasingly blurred versions of this. So essentially that's generalizing a digital elevation model. Just blurring it creates generalized effects when you do stuff with the resulting blurred version of it. And I'm using the focal statistics tool. And I'll make a series of these starting with a 10 pixel blur. And then next I'll do a 20 pixel blur then a 50 pixel blur. So you can kind of get a sense for the difference here. Original blurred, original blurred. And I'll just work through the tool, set it to 20, rename it 20, hit run, ka-chow. And then lastly, get my really blurred 50 pixel blur rolling. And I'm using the circle neighborhood. You can try different shapes to see if it results in less artifacts, but it's up to you. So here's my 50 pixel blur. And you can see that it's it's obviously blurry, you know, 50, 20, 10, original. And I'll group these just so I can keep track of what I'm working with because I'm going to make quite a lot of layers. Now I'm going to open the raster functions and I'm just going to run a traditional hill shade without changing any parameters just to show you what it would look like in the, you know, the universe of defaults. That's a hill shade. Now I'm going to make a hill shade based on my 10 pixel blur and then a hill shade based on my 20 pixel blur and a hill shade based on my 50 pixel blur. And the results are increasingly fuzzy hill shades, which if you zoomed out on this 50 pixel hill shade at a national scale, it would actually look really good. It's appropriate at some scale, not necessarily this scale, but we can use this to create the effect of incidental lighting and a softer shadow because the traditional hill shade has impossibly crisp light and shadow properties associated with it. So what I'm doing now is making each of these progressively blurred hill shades retain only the shadow area for black and then I transition to fully transparent black in the non-shadowed areas like this. And when I stack them up on top of each other you get this kind of effect of incidental shade. So um, like uh, what do they call it? occluded amb ambient occlusion is the fancy word and this is really just kind of a, a quick hacky way I'm gonna do a better ambient occlusion hack next but I'm gonna keep them all and just stack these guys up so as I zoom and pan around you can get a sense for the crispness and you can also see some of the blurred hill shades living behind there now it's a little dark I'm gonna be adding to this with additional levels of shading and so what I'm going to do next is just lighten these guys up. Right now it's fully opaque black in the most shaded areas. I'm going to bump that down to 60% transparent black to fully transparent black. So I'm, I'm almost having halving the strength of each one of these. And, and it actually is starting to look pretty cool, right? I mean, immediately, I would argue that this is better than the traditional hill shade. It's got more nuance. You've got more ambient occlusion-y kind of things happening, like a softer, fainter um, shading that's happening at the lower elevation areas. You get the detail of the fine structures, but with the generalized version, you get a sense for the first order structures. Now, here it is just isolated all by itself with a transparent background. So you get a sense for the stacked up levels of hill shade. Finer features are visible with the crisp hill shade, and then the overall first order structure is visible with the generalized hill shade. 
Moving on, I'll pull up those raster function tools once more. And now I'm going to bring in the slope calculator, slope. Now this is something that I pretty much ignored forever. And, um, but there's so much fun that you can have. The result of a slope just says, how uh, sloped is it? And the bright white areas are really steep and the black areas are really flat. So you see the plateau there in the middle with the, um, the steep edges. And I'm just gonna apply a blur, or I'm sorry, apply a slope to each of my progressively blurred digital elevation models. So I've got crisp slope, kind of blurry slope, and then really blurry slope. Now, why do I do this? Well, I'll show you. You can start stacking up a really kind of beautiful, ghostly, ethereal sense of shade once we play with the color ramps. So instead of black to white, I'm going to flip it and go fully transparent black to fully opaque black. And you get a sense for the steepness. Now, this slope has no idea of the location of its artificial light source. It's just giving me shade on steep areas in every direction. And we'll, ad we'll address that gap in a little bit. But here I go, just applying that same um, semi-transparency scheme of black to, to apply shade to the steep areas for all of these levels of generalization. And these are just simple slopes applied to my progressively generalized digital elevation models. And the result is this kind of wonderfully ghostly, ethereal sense of hill shade. Very smooth, kind of, it almost looks like it's carved out of cream or something. Here it is all by itself removed from the standard hill shades and you get a sense for just the general terrain and there's no light source here there's no northwest corner light source it's just shaded by areas that are steep and that's pretty interesting but if you just have it all by itself there is a weakness in that you lose all that interesting sunlit slope stuff so in real life i mean there is a sun and it hits the sun facing side of terrain items and reflects a little bit of that light. So what I'm going to do now is just do a standard hill shade like I had done before, but instead of only keeping the shadow portion, now I'm only going to retain the highlight portion. So I'm going to get rid of the black shadow, make it fully transparent white to bright white, and we'll see how this looks. And immediately we get a sense for the sun facing parts of the terrain. I'm gonna to tone it down, I'll make it 30% transparent and snug it in a little bit. Okay, now I have the benefit of that ambient occlusion-like set of slope layers. And if I drag my reflective surface kind of nestled in the midst of those things, I get the benefit of that nice, beautiful, um, scattered light shade from the slopes, but I bring back a little bit of the crispness of direct sunlight hitting the higher elevation areas. And it's kind of a neat effect. So now I'm just going to group these again so I can keep track of what's going on because already we've got quite a few layers cooking. So this is a hacked version of ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is really hard to do and it's slow and you have to sample elevations from all over the place and the system has to know well what would light look like if there's a big mountain would it be shading the smaller mountain in the shade and it's really complex this while not quite the same gives a similar ish effect and look i'm all about shortcuts and i'm all about using the tools that we can use quickly right out of our toolbox so fake ambient occlusion in ArcGIS Pro by stacking up slopes. Okay, now talk about hacks. This is a serious hack. Right now I'm gonna do a hill shade on one of those slopes. And you're like, whoa, this is like weird. The result is this kind of embossed effect for the landscape. So I'm doing a hill shade 
on a slope. And I'm doing this because I, I want to highlight curves. So what this does is it showcases areas of abruptly shifting terrain. So standard traditional hill shades aren't very good at showing peaks and ridge lines and um, river edges, that kind of stuff. It gets softened, it gets lost. What this does is it brings in a crisp version, uh, an artificially, honestly, crisp version of those terraced and linear features. And it just highlights areas like winding rivers, of course, the riverbanks, and it will highlight geologic stratification if it exists in your area. And it'll add a, a nice little lovely sense of texture. So it's, it's like a curvature tool, but you can control the direction of the curvature because you're using hill shade, so I can point it one direction or another. And I'll color this by keeping the shade, keeping the highlights, and removing all of the opaque gray in between. And right away I've got this neat kind of encrispifier that happens when I apply that color scheme to a hill shade of a slope. It's like inception, right? It's the hill shade of a slope. Isn't that weird? Not what the tool was intended to do, but that makes it even more fun because we're misusing tools to get results that are awesome. Hill shade on a slope. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply that same color scheme to my other two or my other three versions of of the hill shade on a slope and honestly the visual impact of these more generalized hill shade on a slope layers is pretty minimal and very faint but it depends on how i paint the the black to transparent to white gradient um but look you know while i'm being fastidious why not be mega fastidious so I'm just going to apply it to these uh, scaled versions anyways. And I can tweak this to see how it looks. You know, I'll go into the mid range and maybe widen the transparency range a little bit to minimize the effect of that more generalized hill shaded slope. And now I've got uh, a group of things that are almost like an edge detection or um, a, a terraced terrain enhancement. I'll call it uh, hill shaded slopes on blurred DEMs to highlight curvature. It's a curvature hack, but even better than regular curvature because I can control the direction. Now here it is all by itself, isolated, so you get a sense of what we're working with. We've got bright edges of terraces and rivers and dark opposite sides of edges of terraces and rivers. And when you put that all together, it's sort of a, a neat combination of things. I'll just pan and zoom. And what I like to do is actually see the layers build up as it renders. So you get a sense for all of these contributing visual effects. Boom, 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 boom. Kind of growing. And in this case, I've zoomed in beyond its native resolution. So be kind to me. So now I am going to make a copy of my original digital elevation model up here. And I'm just going to do the, the mist hack, but instead of mist, I'm going to use it to push down areas of lower elevation with a black um, ambient shade layer. So I'm going to go, instead of black to white, I'll go black to fully transparent black. And I'll just bring that down so only the lower elevation air. And immediately I've got this sense of darkened areas of ambient shade in, in lower elevation areas and valleys, river valleys, rivulets, that sort of thing. We're pushing it back visually. We're covering up some of our bright, crisp hill shade, which is what happens in real life because sun just isn't going to get directly bouncing off the edge of a canyon wall if there's a big tall mountain just to the left of it. And you can see before, after, before, after. 
the effect that this has. Now this is a really important step in bringing out that first order meandering elevation structure of your area. Super simple too and really a beautiful effect. And if you did a white version of that on top of this, you can start feathering in mist for the especially low elevation areas. Left is our combined version and on the right is just the standard traditional hill shade to give you a comparative sense. And we'll take a closer look at the northern portion of this. You can see before the standard hill shade and then we'll show the result of all our layered up ambient hacks. Here's the southern portion and now here it is with our set of hacks. So hey, thanks for following along. I hope you try this out and I hope you have a total blast and I hope you improve on this process and share your results with me. Thanks for watching. Happy mapping.